I was reading the dialogue from this show. Yeah, because I was able to make this distinction between this is a fictional character, I am a real person. I, it was easy for me, really. I think they call that acting. Oh, there you go. Uh, take number three left floor, uh, Chloe. Uh, hi, my question is for Brent Spiner about your background with musical theater and whether when you started your career that was what you wanted to do and how you got into it and all that sort of thought. Uh, you know what, I went to a high school in Houston, Texas and I had a teacher named Cecil Pickett who was a genius and in my high school drama class uh, I had so many people that, that uh, the Quaid brothers, Randy and Dennis, were in my class and uh, Tommy Schlamme, who produced the West Wing and directed the West Wing, was in my drama class. And um, our teacher, Cecil Pickett, he encouraged us to do everything. So we did Shakespeare, we did musicals, we did Moliere, we did contemporary things. And it really was just the best foundation possible and set me up for, you know, what I later found in New York, which was, it's best if you can do it all. And. Uh, that being said, I'd like to do a little song for you now, Tracy. Let me, uh, if there was only a, a, a drum set here, I could probably, uh, oh, maybe I'll just head on back to the drums. And I just set you all up for such disappointment. I'm so sorry. I, I wish I knew a song. LaVar, do you know a song? The, uh, you know, what about the Reading Rainbow song? Did you do that? I think we've already done that with Rainbow. <laughs> we have? Where was I when you were doing the uh, Reading Rainbow song? Hey, you were asleep, as always. <laughs> Taking a nap. I always nap when they don't start with... I have a question for Brent Spiner. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope that answered your question, Tracy. And it is Tracy, right? Yeah. Chloe! Oh, man. Where's Tracy? Where did you go? Tracy's in the back. You can see right there. Oh, all right. Oh, there you are, Tracy. Good. All right. Anyway, Chloe, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Uh, LeVar, can I ask you about the first time putting on the visors and, and, and or the visor and how much you could see or, or not see when you have that thing in front of your eye? For the record, putting on the visor was a pain in my head. Um, the visor tended to restrict my vision by about 80 to 85 percent. The first season, I bumped into everything on the set, including the other actors. It was necessary to learn how to navigate without actually seeing my feet. And by the end of the seven-year run, I came to loathe its very being. Be honest. <laughs> However, I do have a daughter going to college next year, and I intend to auction that sucker on me. It actually be called the Visor Scholarship. Visor Scholarship. The Jordi LaForge Visor Scholarship. So I take it you stole the visor. <laughs> Steal? Such a harsh word. Yeah. Right. Borrowed? <laughs> Indefinitely. Yes, exactly. But they forgot to return. <laughs> well, as you know, payback is a bitch. Yes. Brent, Will, did you forget to return anything from the set of TNG? Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have two, well, I had two uh, communicators. Uh, that were given to be my nanny my and my costume designer because she knew how much I loved her. One of them I had in my office at home. The other one was uh, cremated with a friend of mine who died way too young, who was an enormous Star Trek fan. So I gave that, I gave that to him. Um, uh, I have some of the operating chips. I have dozens of sheets of, of Okudogram stickers that Mike and Rick gave me. And one day, behind stage nine, I don't know why it was there, but there was a cardboard box, and it had in it from the original Star Trek these little square things that sort of look like, they're like floppy disks, 
that didn't exist in the 60s. And they're little square painted pieces of wood that they would put into things on the bridge. And they were just sitting there. And it seemed like an unbelievable crime. They were trash. So I gave them a home where they would be appreciated. <laughs> I, uh, you know, when we were making, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Generations, the first feature, uh, we got to the studio one morning to start shooting and we were informed that the captain's chair had been stolen. <laughs> in, in the middle of the night. I don't know how they got away with it, but if you come to my living room, <laughs> and, and I, I charge very little to take your photo in that chair. There's easier ways to get people to watch Fresh Hell. I guess. If you will watch Fresh Hell, I will give you that chair. Uh, on the, the right, uh, Clinton. Clinton, buddy, how you doing? Good. Uh, my question is for LeVar Burton. Uh, um, I wanted to ask what the hiring process was like when you were getting the job on Roots. With, um... Roots? Roots? The hiring process? Um, I was a student, uh, second year at university, uh, uh, studying theater. They had, um, pretty much exhausted the normal means of finding professional talent in Los Angeles. And they had seen everyone who had an agent who was black and male. And um, they started beating the bushes. They did a casting session in New York, one in Chicago. They came back to Los Angeles and then just sort of started casting the net wider. And as a drama student at uh, the University of Southern California, I went out on what they call a go see. Um, you go to an address and see whoever answers the door. <laughs> It's also called Out Call. No, I think that's an adult magazine personal ad situation. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I should have been paid a lot more. A lot more. A lot more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. Or less. Depending. <laughs> no, more. Yeah. Have you seen it? Stop. I'm just saying. So finish your answer on Roots, because you went to the place and it was a go-see. Went to the place, went to the go-see, and, uh, and read for uh, the director, David Green. Um, he told me I was terrible. He, no, he did, because I was a theater major. I had no concept of uh, acting for the camera. Uh, so I was trying to project, you know, to the balcony, and, uh, and he thought it was awful, because it was inappropriate. However, he said to me later that in the adjustment that I made, um, when he explained to me that acting for the camera was a very intimate, intimate activity, that, uh, that he, he believed that he had found, he had found his kunta. Uh, the, I think the final episode of Roots is uh, number three on the list of, of most watched television uh, events in the history of the movie. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you all, all of the, the different uh, technical devices that you used on the show at the time, you know, with the stuff of science fiction, but now, I mean, in a way, the producers of the show were pressing it. You had things that like iPads and tricorders. Uh, does that surprise you at all now that you're sometimes holding in your hand these things that you had as props? 20, 25 years ago? It doesn't surprise me at all. I don't think that the producers were necessarily pressing. I think that there's always been a link between science fiction literature, that which we imagine, and that which we create. And, and you know, I believe that there was some kid who in the 60s watched the original Star Trek series, uh, grew up, became a designer and engineer, and was inspired by those scenes of Shatner. You know, pulling out that thing, you know, in that Velcro place on his hip, because apparently there are no pockets in the future. There are no pockets, no pockets. because we lost the pocket war, right? In the 21st century. Indeed. Act surprised. What happens? And enjoy them now. <laughs> and he flips that thing out, and he calls Scotty on the ship, and asks him to be beamed up. That child became a designer, a product, an engineer, and, and is responsible for a technology more prevalent than the toaster. 
By show of hands, how many of you have either used or been in the presence of someone using a flip cell phone? <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. There are a lot of, of technological innovations that I think can, their roots can be traced back to Star Trek. Um, the iPad, we carry pads all over the ship. Right? Captain always had a pad in his, in his ready room. Right. Jordy always had a pad. Right. Um, How did they come up with that? The iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Google Glasses, wow, what a really interesting idea. That is totally unique. I've never seen anything like that before. I tried to save the world from angry birds, but I was just too slow. <laughs> wait, for, that's one you have to wait for a minute. It's gonna come back around, and you'll be like, that was extraordinarily clever. <laughs> I was helping Frank fix his computer, um, and we were doing a text message, and I was doing it with my uh, Android phone, which <laughs> makes it makes the uh, original series communicator sound whenever I get a text message because. That's what the only sound it should make. <laughs> the next generation communicator sound is too quiet. Um, and, uh, and, and we were making Star Trek jokes to each other while we were doing it. And I thought it was remarkable that he and I were communicating in a way that did not exist when we worked on the show that inspired the devices that we were using to communicate with each other. And th that was, it was one of the most satisfying meta moments of my life. Why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> I... What is that phone called? An Android phone? <laughs> it's constantly correcting my contractions. It's really annoying. to say. I'm not just, stop looking at me! Oh, we're gonna wrap it up in a second. Uh, any, any final words, any questions you've never been asked by a friend that you wish you'd been asked or you'd like to answer now or a favorite question you've gotten or um, I'll leave it to you. The answer is yes. <laughs> and if you just take one thing away from spending any time with me today, I hope that it will be this. Please be kind, be honest, work hard, and be awesome. Did I, have I mentioned Fresh Hell yet? <laughs> oh, I have, okay. Uh, if, if, if I can leave you with anything... <laughs> and you know, you've got your own stuff. I, I don't to, I'm glad you were here. I really... Uh, this was really fun. <laughs> See you next time, but you don't have to take our word for it.